Now we want to see what happens to the subdifferential if we are in the interior of the domain of a convex function. And um, now um, to establish our goal, um, the goal will be to show whenever x is in uh, the interior of the domain of a function f and f is uh, convex and proper, uh, we don't require lower semi-continuity here, um, then we want to show that um, um, the subdifferential at this interior point of the domain is non-empty, um, convex. Um, this property you should have established in your exercises. And most importantly, compact, um, so closed and bounded. Um, this is our goal, and uh, to, to, to achieve this, we have to um, deliver a series of arguments um, to approach this goal step by step. Um, the first step in this um, series of arguments will be to show that um, f is bounded from above around x bar. So there is a, an upper bound of the function values um, whenever we are in an interior point of the domain. Um, this will be the first step. Um, this shows will, will lead to the uh, to some interior point in the epigraph of f. Um, which then will, us, will allow us to apply a separation theorem and eventually show the existence of a, sub, uh, of a subgradient at x bar. So we will then show that uh, the subgradient at x bar is non-empty. Um, then this allows us to show that f is also bounded from below around x bar, um, since uh, this element of the subgradient will uh, deliver us some um, a fine minor end, and this will show that um, we are actually bounded from below. And from this, um, we will show that f is locally Lipschitz continuous. Um, on the interior of the domain. This is a very useful property in itself, um, but this will, um, this local Lipschitz constant at the point x bar will uh, give us um, a bound for the subdifferential. So we will then show that uh, the subdifferential of uh, at of f at x bar is contained in the ball with a radius equal to the Lipschitz constant, this local Lipschitz constant at x bar around, uh, not x bar, around zero. So the, uh, the, nor so the norm of any subgradient at x bar um, will be bounded by the Lipschitz con by this local Lipschitz constant at x bar. It's obviously very uh, so. It's it's kind of obvious that um, this function here, which 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 has some asymptotes here, uh, is convex, but it is not um, not bounded from. So if if you continue here, it's is it's not bounded from above. So this function will certainly not um, satisfy. Um, this uh, bounded from above uh, globally, so we are, we always have to work with neighborhoods neighborhoods of x bar, and uh, if we have this, then if we have such a neighborhood here, uh, we will see. Yeah, this function is indeed bounded if we choose the neighborhood small enough. Uh, you will also see that uh, these boundedness conditions are, will be eventually kind of redundant. Um, so when, whenever we have established local Lipschitz continuity, um, then it's 
clear that uh, the function is also continuous and the continuous function um, will attain supremum on, or, and maximum on a, on a ball around the point uh, if the ball is small enough. So, so if the ball is contained in the, in the domain of f. Um, so this is, um, so in the, in the end, uh, these boundedness properties are not that important uh, to remember, but it will be um, necessary to prove all these all these other implications here. Okay, so now we have a plan. Um, now let's execute the plan. So let's formulate a theorem. Okay, so we want to show f is bounded from above around x bar. And here the very important property is that we are in a finite dimensional in a product space. So uh, to emphasize this, I will uh, is explicitly write this down. So let H be a finite dimensional in a product space. Then let x bar be an interior point of the domain of f, where f from x to r bar is convex. We don't re we don't need properness here um, because if the function is not proper, then the, all these things will collapse, and um, you have a function value of. Uh, minus infinity around uh, the point here, which is still uh, bounded from above, trivially. Okay, so we have a finite dimensional space, we have a convex function, and we have an interior point in the domain. Then there exist some epsilon greater than zero, and a constant big M in R such that f of, let me think, yeah, let's call this y, is less or equal than m for all y in the ball with radius epsilon around x bar. Okay, so this is our first theorem on the way. Um, and the, the argument is a very finite dimensional one, and I will, I will show you what I mean. So, um, let epsilon greater or equal than zero, and let, let us have a finite set um, B uh, contained in the domain of F such that the epsilon ball around X bar is contained in the convex hull of B. And yeah, that looks correct. Um, this will give us this epsilon, in fact. Um, it's not clear that such a thing exists. And the calculation for this is rather tedious. So I will give you, uh, in order for you to believe me, I will give you three examples how to construct, how to potentially construct such a finite set B. Um, given that we are in a finite dimensional space. So, um, examples. Um, in all the examples, we have uh, some um, orthonormal basis. So, let E1 to En be an orthonormal basis of H, 
then what, how, can, how can we do this? Um, the probably simplest one to calculate will be if you have like if you if you write this if, if you put if you form a simplex of n plus one points so in a two-dimensional space you will have a triangle um, the simplex with two um, uh, three angles uh, in the three-dimensional space you will have uh, four points this is a tetrahedron uh, and in, generally in an n-dimensional space you will need n plus one points so the first example will be b equals x bar plus delta e1 uh, and so on x bar plus delta en so these are n points and the last point will be x bar minus delta sum of all the EIs. Um, if you write, if you draw this for a two-dimensional space, this will be something like you have x bar here, and here you have your, your orthonormal basis. In Rn, for example, this would be or one potential choice would be um, the basis of unit vectors. Um, but in general, every finite dimensional in a product space has an orthonormal basis. And delta must be small enough so that all these points are, in fact, in the domain of F. So that, uh, that we are in the, in, in the interior uh, guarantees that we can find delta small enough so, th so that all these points are, are close enough to X bar that, that they are still in the domain of F. Okay, um, so um, you will get this, and you, the third vector will be something like this. So this will be x bar plus delta e1, x bar plus delta e2, x bar plus delta, uh, x bar minus delta e1 minus delta e2. This will be the third vector, and you see if you draw the convex hull, then you will get uh, this circle which is completely contained in um, in this triangle in our case. I could also uh, draw this in three dimensions but uh, I don't think it gives much insight because you don't see anything anymore. Okay, so um, this is this example. The next example will be um, in in three dimensions, it would, would be an octahedron, and in two dimensions, it would be a square, which is like uh, standing on, on, on one of the angles. Uh, let's see what I mean. So we take all the points x bar, and we take plus minus delta e j. Um, and here we take j from 1 to n. Um, so, uh, the, the, the second example would be like this, we take x bar, we take x bar plus delta e1, we take x bar minus delta e1, um, we take x bar plus delta e2, and we take x bar minus delta e2, and again, delta small enough guarantees that all these points are in the domain of F. Okay, and then you can draw the convex hull, which, as I, as I said, will be a square which is standing on its angle, and then you find um, a ball in uh, a ball inside this um, yeah shape inside this uh, convex body. And the third example will be um, x bar um, plus the sum of delta sigma j e j, j from 1 to n. n is, by the way, the dimension of this, of this h, of course. So I should write this down. n equals the dimension of h. Okay. And here we have um, sigma j is in 
plus or minus 1. So for each dimension, you have the choice between plus and minus 1, uh, j from 1 to n. Okay. And how does this look? The third example, well, you take x bar here, then you take plus and plus, so this will be this point, you take um, plus and minus, so this will be this point here, so this will be x bar plus delta e1 plus delta e2, x bar plus delta e1 minus delta e2, then you have minus and plus, I guess, so x bar minus delta e1 plus delta e2, then you have x bar minus delta e1 minus delta e2. Again, delta small enough guarantees that all the points are close enough to x bar. Okay, and then you get a square. And you can also now find a ball inside the square. And this also works for, for any, any dimension, so for any n. Um, this will give you um, such a set B um, so that a ball is contained in the convex hull. Um, it is very important here though that the dimension is finite, otherwise you will not find such a finite set. Okay, so um, the easiest thing to calculate is this and I did actually calculate this in my preparation and I decided that this is it's not worth showing this because it's just uh, basically finding some some delta which is small enough and this is just tedious um, but I hope you still believe me that this is possible okay now that we have established this um, the 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 actual proof will be very easy um, so let M. This is this upper bound which we will which we will find uh, just the it should be the the maxim, maximal value of anything of any points in B of any function values in B. So it will be the maximum of f of x with x in B. Okay, this maximum exists because. Um, B is finite and all the elements of f of x are contained in the domain of x and I should um, just take precaution for the case that um, the function is not proper and, any, uh, and something uh, at, or all of the points in B have function value minus infinity then you can still take zero um, and this will give you a real number as required. So this will always be a real number because of the finiteness of B and the fact that these things are contained in the domain of F so everything will uh, so any point here will be smaller than plus infinity okay now let's so we have picked M and now we have to show that F of Y is less or equal than M okay so therefore take Y in um, B epsilon of x bar as required um, and because of our property this is contained in the convex hull of B and therefore um, as you have proven in the exercise um, there exist um, lambda 1 uh, to lambda m in b and x1, uh, not in b, sorry, non-negative real numbers. Okay, greater or equal than 0. Um, points x1 to xm, these points are in b, um, such that the sum of all these lambda i's is 1 and 
the sum of the um, the sum of lambda i x i is y. Okay, and now we can apply Jensen's inequality. Um, so by Jensen's inequality. We have f of y, we have y equals um, the sum of lambda i x i. Jensen's inequality tells us whenever we have this with sum of lambda i equals 1, we can write this as the sum of lambda i times the respective function values. And the respective function values, since x, i is in b, are all less or equal than m. So this is less or equal than, replace this by m. What remains is just the sum of the lambda i's, which is 1. So this is equal to m. Um, by the way, these... Uh, uh, these examples should be a bit separated a bit better. Um, I guess this is fine. Okay. So we have shown that f of y is less or equal than m, with y taken arbitrarily in the epsilon ball around x bar. And this is what we needed to show in order to show this local boundedness from above of um, the function around x-bar.